Uh, we now come to the fourth oral question. Baroness Faulkner of Markovine. My Lords, I beg leave to ask the question standing in my name on the order paper. Baroness Sugg. My Lords, the UK continues to urge de-escalation and an immediate return to the negotiating table in our engagements with our partners, including the Azerbaijani Minister Bayramov and the Armenian Foreign Minister Munat Sakanyan. We have also been in contact with the Turkish and Russian authorities to discuss the matter, and we continue to believe that the best solution to this conflict is a peaceful negotiation under the framework of the OSCE Minsk Group. My Lord, the sad fact is that innocent civilians are being maimed and killed while the Minsk process continues to fail them and has done so for over 25 years. But so too has NATO failed, insofar as Turkey's rampant authoritarianism and turbocharged nationalism imperils its allies' interests in, in Syria, in Libya, and now in Nagorno-Karabakh. So will the noble lady tell the House what discussions Her Majesty's Government is having within NATO to curb Turkey's power and to reassess its membership as a last resort? Uh, my Lords, I join the noble lady's concern on the reports we're seeing of uh, civilian settlements being targeted. Uh, we are deeply concerned on that, and as I say, we urge um, a, an immediate return to the ceasefire. Um, on NATO, the Secretary-General yesterday highlighted NATO's concern on the escalation of hostilities and called for all sides to immediately cease fighting. Uh, he also uh, said that he expects Turkey to use its considerable influence to calm tensions, and we welcome these calls. T Turkey is a key NATO partner, and we are continuing to work in NATO to encourage them to use their influence to calm tensions. Uh, Baroness Ramsey of uh, Cartwell. My Lords, does the Minister agree that the war in the Caucasus over Nagorno-Karabakh is definitely worsening, with increasing casualties and as areas determined to regain territory they consider theirs? So what is the government actually doing with other like-minded countries, not just in NATO, to get at least a ceasefire? And secondly, given that the US is preoccupied, are we really going to let Russia and Turkey literally call the shots? Uh, my Lords, I, I do acknowledge that we are seeing an increase uh, and an escalation uh, in the fighting, and that is, of course, deeply concerning. The UK is uh, working on a number of levels in order to try to bring about an end to this. We're working in the OSCE, our diplomats on the ground, uh, our Minister for European Neighbourhoods has spoken to her counterparts, the Foreign Secretary issued a statement with the Canadians, second statement with the Canadians yesterday, um, and you know, the US uh, President and the Secretary of State also have uh, issued a strong statement calling to a return to the negotiation table. Uh, Lord Campbell of Pitt and Green, uh, my work, by welcoming that last answer from the Minister, can I say this to her? The real possibility of a regional proxy war, shouldn't we be calling upon our NATO ally Turkey not to get further involved? And as for Russia, which has influence on both sides, shouldn't we ask Russia to get more involved? Um, my Lords, we are working both with Turkey and Russia uh, on this. On this. Um, our, uh, it, within Moscow, we are speaking to the Russian authorities there, and also we are working closely with Turkey. The Defence Minister, Secretary of State, was uh, visiting Turkey last week and raised this issue. So I would say that we are uh, working with all parties that we need to in order to try to bring an end to this conflict. Uh, Lord Randall of Uxbridge. My Lords, uh, uh, can my noble friend tell me what assessment, if any, has Her Majesty's Government made of a potential increase of any terrorist recruitment or activity as a result of this dangerous instability in the area? Um, my Lords, uh, we uh, are, of course, ensure, uh, working to ensure that any external, part, uh, any external partners don't actually escalate this issue further, uh, and we would call on all exten external partners to, to help bring about the peace that we need to see. Uh, Baroness Cox. My Lord, may I ask the noble lady, the minister, if she's aware that legal experts, such as Geoffrey Robertson, QC, argue that Azerbaijan's repeated claims to sovereignty over Karabakh can be refuted. It's always been predominantly occupied by ethnic Armenians. They held a referendum in 1992 with an overwhelming vote for independence. And Azerbaijan's previous attempt at ethnic cleansing justifies their claim for self-determination under the UN Charter. 
and Azerbaijan's continuing attempt now at ethnic cleansing involves violations of international law, targeting civilians with tanks, helicopters, heavy artillery, multiple launch rocket systems, including smirch and cluster bombs. Therefore, will the minister say what Her Majesty's government is doing more actively to promote an urgent ceasefire? Um, my Lords, I of course pay tribute to the noble lady's work in this area, and I know her charity Heart uh, does a lot of work in Nagorno-Karabakh. Um, we, um, we are taking an active role in this as best we can. We are working with a number of our like-minded uh, partners uh, within the OSCE, as I mentioned, and we are also working within the UN Security Council and NATO to try and bring about a, a de-escalation. Uh, on the sovereignty point, the UK supports the sovereignty and the territorial integrity and the independence of Azerbaijan, whilst underlining the importance of the UN and the OSCE principles. And we are supporting the OSCE Minsk Group process and the basic principles that it beneath that, which does include a return of the occupied territories and the acceptance of a free expression of will on the status of Nagorno-Karabakh. Uh, Lord Collins of Highbury. My Lords, I want to return briefly to the point made by my noble friend Baroness Ramsey, and that's the vacuum that's being created. Now, we have all the statements in the world saying stop this war, but we had a process, the Minsk process, we had talks, we even had a framework agreement. What is the noble lady doing to ensure that the United States returns to its, all its efforts back to that process so that that vacuum is not filled by other players in the region? Uh, my Lords, we support the role that the US is playing in the Minsk process. Uh, I mentioned before the strong statements from the President and the Secretary of State on this issue. We do believe that the Minsk process is the best way to bring about an end to this conflict. The role of that group is to facilitate the negotiations. As I say, they proposed a set of basic principles, but it's, it's for the parties themselves to negotiate a peace agreement, and we recognise that must involve compromise and, and hard choices, but there's no military solution. So we do need the parties to return to the negotiation table with the help of the co-chairs and those, uh, the co-chairs of the US, uh, of France and of Bosco, and we believe that that's the best way to bring about an end to this conflict. Lord Addington. My Lords, would the Minister uh, agree that this is a conflict which has actually got a long history where everybody blames everybody else and everybody blames the backers of their enemy? Could the government put as much pressure on as possible to allow journalists in so the rest of the world knows what's going on? because we can do without propaganda from both sides clogging our view. Uh, my Lords, I agree with the Noble Lord that the roots of this conflict are complex and predate the collapse of the Soviet Union. Uh, apportioning blame is not the solution. I also completely agree with the Noble Lord on the importance of media freedom. Uh, we are concerned around disinformation uh, in this conflict, and we are also concerned of the reports of the lack of access to internet. Um, so we will do all we can to, to facilitate access to the region so that we can actually understand what is happening. Uh, Lord Alton of Liverpool. My Lords, notwithstanding what the noble Baroness has just said about lessons from the past, has she considered, as I was asked to do while visiting Nagorno-Karabakh, how the indigenous, overwhelmingly Armenian community see this violence as an extension of the Armenian genocide, which claimed 1.5 million lives with international indifference, leading to Hitler's infamous remark, who now remembers the Armenians? And in the light of the current attacks on civilians, will we be joining Canada in suspending arms export permits to Turkey and press, as my noble friend Lady Cox called for, the, for the prosecution of those responsible for war crimes and crimes against humanity in Karabakh? Um, my Lords, we continue, continue to monitor developments in the region closely, and we, of course, consider all of our export applications against a strict assessment framework. Uh, we will keep all licences under careful and continual review. Uh, we comply with the OSC arms embargo relating to the Nagorno-Karabakh region, which is considered as part of our export licensing process, and we will continue to work very closely with Canada. Uh, we have issued a number of joint statements with them, and we will work closely with all of our like-mindeds to bring an end to this conflict. Lord Griffiths of Barry Park. My Lords, uh, much mention has been made of the Minsk talks that are now over 25 years old and are about the possibilities of bringing peace but without any outcome that we can appreciate. And uh, of various other bodies that have been in conversation with our government about ways forward at this crucial stage. Azerbaijan and Armenia are both member states of the Council of Europe, uh -huh. um, as indeed um, are Turkey, 
um, and Russia, yeah. with uh, the United States, of course, um, um, uh, on, on the sidelines as observers. Wouldn't this be a forum through which, especially with its focus on human rights, yes. uh, we could uh, stimulate a br more broadly based response to the present crisis, particularly perhaps focusing on the civilian losses that uh, are being widely reported, in order to get a new sense of purpose in what is a very, very long-standing dispute? Yeah. Uh, I completely acknowledge the Noble Lord's po point on the length uh, of this conflict and of course we must try to use every uh, avenue we have to try to bring about an end to the conflict. We continue to urge the dialogue. We are clear that the only lasting solution to the conflict can be a negotiated one but I will certainly take the Noble Lord's point on the Council of Europe back to the Department to see if there is yet further we can do within that organisation. <laughs>